In the searing heat of the Burmese jungle, a ragtag band of renegades known as the Chindits was about to have their mettle tested like never before. These fearless misfits, hailing from India, Burma, and Britain, formed the world's first ever long-range jungle penetration unit, assembled to turn the tide against Japan's iron grip on jungle warfare during the darkest days of World War II. In 1943, Operation Longcloth took an unexpected turn, leaving the Chindits stranded in the sweltering, feverish pits of the jungle, cut off from any chance of resupply and with Japanese forces hot on their heels. To reach the safety of the British lines over a thousand miles away in India, they'd have to stare down the threat of starvation, disease, and brutal Japanese ambushes. Ten days without food pushed the Chindits to the brink of collapse, but driving them onward was their fearless leader, Charles Wingett, the trailblazer of long-range jungle penetration. As the Chindits faced hell, they would have to rely on the audacity of their leader to have even a sliver of hope of enduring the unforgiving jungle and the hidden enemy lurking within. The Leader Born into a military family on February 26, 1903, in British India, Ord Charles Wingett was no stranger to the region's sweltering heat, where he would later carve his name in the annals of history. In 1921, he enrolled at the prestigious Royal Military Academy in Woolwich and was commissioned as a Royal Artillery Officer. He became known for his prowess in horse riding and extraordinary ability to find creative ways to cross even the most savage rivers. Nicknamed Otter, he was a force to be reckoned with, often challenging authority and earning a reputation as a rebel. In 1928, Ord Charles found an opportunity to transfer to Sudan, where he could finally put his training to the test. After completing an Arabic course in London, he embarked on a remarkable bicycle trek through France all the way to Genoa, then boarded a ship to Egypt, eventually reaching Khartoum. In Sudan, Wingett honed his tactical skills and commanded 300 local soldiers. By 1936, he was immersed in the world of Palestinian politics. His fervor for the Zionist cause and his brutal tactics against Arab guerrillas led him to spearhead a campaign of covert attacks with special night squads, which earned him both praise and criticism. As World War II erupted in 1939, Wingett's friend, Commander-in-Chief Wavell in Cairo, helped him secure an opportunity to create Gideon Force, a motley crew of British, Sudanese, and Ethiopian soldiers. In February 1941, this group, which included Haganah veterans, initiated operations against the Italian occupation forces in Ethiopia. Under Wingett's leadership, they employed guerrilla tactics deep within enemy territory. At the height of their success, these 1,700 men defeated a vastly superior force, capturing 20,000 Italians. Subsequently, they accompanied exiled Emperor Haile Selassie on his triumphant return to Addis Ababa. Despite these achievements, Wingett's detractors stripped him of his command. It was only through the intervention of his political allies that he was given another chance in the Far East. Enter the Chindits. Wingett felt that his service and achievements in Ethiopia had been overshadowed and undermined by the machinations of his rivals within the British military. However, a heavily edited version of his report after the operation in Ethiopia was circulated to Winston Churchill through his political supporters in London. Subsequently, Wingett departed Britain for Rangoon on February 27, 1942. Wingett was ordered to organize guerrilla units to fight behind Japanese lines. However, the collapse of Allied defenses in Burma stalled further planning. Forced out of action and sent to India, he began to promote his unique ideas for jungle long-range penetration units. For this, Wingett was granted command of the Indian 77th Infantry Brigade, from which he forged a jungle long-range penetration unit. This unit was eventually dubbed the Chindits, a mispronounced reference to the Chinta, the mythical Burmese lion guarding the region's temples. With a sizable force at his disposal and the freedom to train them as he saw fit, Wingett implemented an intense and exhausting training regimen. To toughen his men, he had them camp in the Indian jungle during monsoon season, which proved disastrous as it resulted in a high illness rate among the troops. Wingett adhered to unconventional personal, eating, and hygiene habits. Also, he grew his beard long and unkempt and permitted his men to do the same, a practice generally disapproved of within the British military. Despite the perceived eccentricity of his training methods and habits, Wingett continued to garner accolades for his exceptional courage and leadership in the face of the enemy. 
The original 1943 Chindit operation was intended to be a coordinated plan with the field army, but the army's offensive into Burma was cancelled. Undeterred, Wingett persuaded his commanding officer to let him proceed into Burma anyway, arguing the need to disrupt any Japanese attack on Sumpravam and to evaluate the effectiveness of long-range jungle penetration operations. This resulted in Operation Longcloth. Into the Jungle The 3,000 Chindits commenced their expedition by crossing the Chindwin River on February 13th. Two days later, they confronted their first Japanese troops in a series of brutal encounters. The Japanese were viewed as invincible in jungle warfare by British forces. Yet, hardened by their jungle experience, the Chindits performed admirably in these initial skirmishes. Two columns journeyed southward, receiving daylight air supply drops to create the illusion of a direct assault. They even incorporated a man masquerading as a British general. Meanwhile, five additional columns proceeded eastward, two of which, commanded by Michael Calvert and Bernard Ferguson, headed toward the Central North-South Railway in Burma. By March 4th, Calvert's column had reached the valley and successfully sabotaged the railway in 70 locations. Navigating routes devoid of established jungle paths, the Chindits often had to clear their way with machetes, kukris, and once a commandeered elephant. Upon crossing the Irrawaddy River, they found the terrain dry and inhospitable, starkly contrasting with their intelligence briefings. The Japanese, utilizing the crisscross motor roads to their advantage, intercepted supply drops destined for the Chindits, leading to severe exhaustion, dehydration, and food shortages among the Chindits. Faced with dwindling chances of successful new operations due to the range limit of air supply and escalating Japanese pressure, Wingett decided to pull back most of the force, but commanded one column to continue eastward. The columns were left to make their own way back to India. The Way Back The return journey was a hellish ordeal, especially the recrossing of the Irrawaddy River where Japanese observers and patrol boats along the riverbank quickly responded to any attempted crossings. Wingett was among the first to undertake the perilous trek back, leaving the numerous columns of soldiers stranded deep within the jungle without his personal guidance. However, his unique training and indomitable spirit had been ingrained in these brave fighters, fortifying them as food supplies dwindled and soldiers began falling prey to malaria and dysentery. Unable to cross the river or receive air supply drops, the columns gradually fragmented into smaller groups. These small clusters, often pursued by larger Japanese forces, were forced to take refuge in the densest parts of the jungle, relying solely on their training and resolve to endure the nightmare. Some groups went without food for over ten days. Desperate, they resorted to eating their mules, initially tasked with ammunition transport. Soldiers fell daily, succumbing to starvation, disease, or despair. Some refused to move forward. Throughout the spring and autumn of 1943, individual Chindit groups found their way back to India. The army did what it could, even air evacuating some wounded men when possible. Some Chindits reached China, others escaped to northern Burma, while the rest were either captured or lost. By the end of April, after a punishing three-month mission, most surviving Chindits had traversed the Chindwin River, covering between 750 and 1,000 miles of inhospitable terrain. Of the original 3,000 men, 818 had either been captured or succumbed to disease. Of the 2,182 who returned, about 600 were not fit to return to military service. Wingett handpicked a few to retain. The remainder were reintegrated into their original battalions. Legacy Operation Longcloth, true to most of Wingett's initiatives, was met with a mix of applause and sharp criticism. Many British officers viewed the operations as a wasteful use of critical resources that yielded few technical gains. However, others argued that the mission demonstrated the Allies' capability to match the Japanese in jungle warfare. Despite earning a slight tactical advantage, the Chindit's first operation was leveraged as a significant morale booster and a propaganda piece. Wingett even met with Churchill, who took him to Canada for an Allied conference where the concept of long-range penetration was highly lauded. The United States was enthusiastic about the bold idea, and the Chindit secured support from the 1st Air Commando Group, enhancing their capabilities with aircraft for supply drops, casualty evacuation, and air support. The American K Ration Pact further bolstered their resolve, providing superior sustenance compared to British or Indian packs. However, tragedy soon struck. On March 24th, 
while returning from a meeting with Air Force commanders. Wingate's aircraft crashed into a jungle-clad mountain during a thunderstorm, resulting in the loss of everyone on board. Mourning but undeterred, the Chindits carried on under new leadership. The Chindits would undertake several other operations, mostly with limited results and often at a high casualty cost. Nonetheless, their service impacted the war in Burma. Their tenacious spirit and battlefield innovations would aid future units fighting in challenging conditions. Even Japanese commander Mudaguchi Renya admitted that the Chindits had disrupted their plans and diverted critical resources from other vital battles. Ultimately, and that of their audacious founder, lived on through their innovative air supply and survival techniques, later adopted by Allied Air Forces to support larger forces operating independently or cut off from conventional lines of communication. Thank you for watching Dark Ducks. For more epic warfare stories lost to time, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. For more military action and the newest combat technology, tap on your screen and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels. We publish new content regularly, so stay tuned.